Electromagnetism makes up one of the most important forces in the universe. Electromagnetism is what binds your atoms together, makes computers possible, and is ultimately responsible for every chemical reaction going on in and around us. The electromagnetic force comes in two pieces, an electric part and a magnetic part. In this video, we'll examine the electric force. The electric force depends on a number of factors. First, there's a constant that's the same throughout the universe. Although in the real world this number is very, very big, in our code we're going to set it equal to 1 to make the math simpler. We can change it later if we want to calculate real world forces. Second, there's the charge of the object experiencing the force. Charge is a fundamental property of matter, just like mass. However, unlike mass, charge comes in two types, positive and negative. We'll label this first object with a 1. Next, there's the charge of the object exerting the force. We'll label this object with a 2. Because these charge values are being multiplied, if the two charge values have the same sign, the force will push the objects apart. But if the charge values have opposite signs, then the force will pull the two objects together. Next, we divide by the square of the distance between the two objects. The next piece we need is a direction to turn this force into a vector. We can get the direction of the electric force using something called a unit vector. Your textbook might write a unit vector as a variable with a hat over it. You can think of a unit vector as telling you what percentage of a vector points in the horizontal direction and what percentage points in the vertical direction. In this case, we need the direction of the distance vector from object 2 to object 1, so we'll ask vPython to turn this distance into a vector. When we want to reverse the process and calculate the force that object 1 exerts on object 2, the only piece that changes is this unit vector, which will then point in the opposite direction. Here's a function we can use to visualize the electric force. Remember, object 1 is experiencing the force and object 2 is exerting the force. First, we set the value for the electric force constant. We'll use a value of 1 for now to keep the math simple, but later you will change this to the real world value. Next, we calculate the distance vector from object 2 to object 1. This is the line that determines which object is exerting the force and which one is experiencing the force. Next, we calculate the magnitude of the force from object 2 on object 1. This calculation has all of the features we examined earlier. Finally, we turn this magnitude into a vector by multiplying the magnitude by the distance unit vector. vPython uses the name hat for this vector since mathematicians and scientists write unit vectors with a hat over the letter. After calculating this force vector, we create an arrow to represent the electric force. At the end of this function, we return the force vector so that we can use it later. Now that we have a set of instructions for creating these force vectors, let's make a helium nucleus and an electron. We can create these objects by using vPython's sphere command. Each of these spheres will need four pieces of information. First, we need to give the position of each sphere as a vector. vPython works in three dimensions, so this position vector needs an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, and a z-coordinate in that order. We'll make all of our z-coordinates zero for now. Next, we need to give each sphere a charge, since charge is used in calculating the electric force. Next, we need to provide a radius. This radius will specify the size of each sphere in the window, although it won't affect any of the physics calculations. Finally, we need to give each sphere a color. Let's make the helium nucleus red. When we run the code, we'll see that our helium nucleus appears at the coordinates we specified. Now let's repeat that process to create an electron. We need to give this electron a different position than the helium nucleus, because the electric force does not like it when two objects share the same location. Let's also give the electron a smaller charge and a smaller radius than the helium nucleus, just like in real life. Running the code again, we see both the helium nucleus and the electron. Next, we need to calculate the electric force between the helium nucleus and the electron. This is where our E-force function comes in. Notice that we need to use this function twice, once for the force on the electron from the helium nucleus and once for the force on the helium nucleus from the electron. Let's also ask vPython to print these force vectors for us. Now when we run the code, we see arrows representing the electric force that the helium nucleus exerts on the electron and that the electron exerts on the helium nucleus. As promised, these forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, which we can see in the display window and in the printed numbers. 
Suppose we now add a lithium ion that has the exact opposite charge of the electron and we place it the same distance away from the helium nucleus. We can now add calculations of the electric force from the lithium ion to the helium nucleus and from the helium nucleus to the lithium ion. From this new diagram we can see that the helium nucleus is experiencing two forces, one from the electron and one from the lithium ion. Although these forces are equal in magnitude, one is a repulsive force while the other is attractive. This diagram also shows us that we are missing a pair of forces. We don't have any arrows pointing between the electron and the lithium ion. The activities at the link in the description below will walk you through the process of adding these forces and learn about how the electric force works.